everyone. Today I want to do the mid-year book freakout tag. This is absolutely one of my favorite booktube traditions, although apparently looking back on my archive videos I've made for the past nine years, I've only done this video twice somehow. I don't understand, but I love the fact that everyone has their own take on this. Everyone begrudgingly either like snarks about the crush question or works their way around it or just answers it earnestly and I just love that we've embraced this tag from a creator who no longer makes videos. This definitely suited more for like the YA booktube in the like mid 20 teens vibe but I love that we continue to do it every year and like other tags have been made to replace it but it just cannot be dethroned and I love us for that. So I am here to do the tag for apparently only the third time although I've certainly seen enough of them to feel like I've done it every year but I'm here back again to do it a little late but better late than never. So. I'm also baking a peach pie right now, so I need to not have this take too long because I need to keep an eye on the pie. But I actually have thought of answers for all these questions, so hopefully that means that it doesn't take very long for me to answer them. Uh, question number one, is the best book you've read this year so far? I feel like on a different day, I might answer this differently. But as of right this moment, I'm gonna say Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. It's my favorite book I've read this year so far. I just loved how much it accomplished in being only about 300 pages. It is kind of like the perfect size novel. I related to it so deeply in its discussions of living with mental illness and seeing a bit from the outside how other people perceive you and how certainly mental illness does not excuse bad behavior, but at the same time how out of control of your emotions you can be when you're struggling and in the pain that is so deeply felt when the people who love you the most don't understand what you're going through and can't understand what you're going through and it's just also hilarious it's tender i think that the protagonist is wonderful even though she is also deeply infuriating and i think she has some wonderful relationships with people in her life especially her sister i love to see the interplay of that and overall i think it's just fabulous literary fiction that i would have loved to see win the women's prize but alas we'll discuss that briefly later question number two is the best sequel you've read so far this year far and away that is the golden fool by robin hobb which is the second book in the tawny man trilogy the eighth book in the larger realm of the elderlings i'm finally making progress with this series i've been reading it since like 2016 so it's nice that i've finally crested over the halfway mark and I loved this. It's my favorite book in the series so far. So much happens in terms of character relationships. It's not a book that is super action-packed. We're not moving around a lot. Um, we're kind of in the same spot for the majority of this book, but so much happens politically and interpersonally and uh, I loved development of certain characters and so I, I loved this. I loved this whole experience and um, it made me immediately want to carry on to read Fool's Fate, which I did a couple months later. Question number three is a new release that you're excited to read that you haven't gotten to yet. And for this question, I'll just answer with all of the new releases that I've pre-ordered this year that have come in. So just this week, I got Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield, which is supposed to be a lesbian gothic story um, about a woman who goes on a deep sea expedition and when she comes back, she is different in some way. I'm getting hints of like maybe this will be a little bit like the Pisces, maybe a little bit like the Shape of Water, I'm not sure. I freaking love the Shape of Water so you know I'm very excited for this and it's got a Sarah Waters blurb on the front which is always good to see. I've also got A Prayer for the Crown Shy which is the sequel to the first Monk and Robot book. A Song for the Wild Build. I've got The Candy House by Jennifer Egan. I still want to reread Goon Squad before I read this but I'm still really excited to do so hopefully by the end of the summer. We'll see. I have Life Ceremony by Sayaka Murata, which is a collection of Japanese short stories. She is very dark and twisted, and I cringe anytime I hear anyone talk about how quirky uh, Comedian Star Woman was because I just don't feel like that is an accurate understanding of what was really going on in that book. And also, if you get anything quirky or endearing out of um, Earthlings, I just I don't know what's wrong with you, but I loved Earthlings. It was delicious. It was super messed up, very dark. And so I'm expecting that, but in short story form. So I'm looking forward to getting to this one. And then lastly, I do have a 
copy of La Bona that I pre-ordered, although I am really scared to read this now because I've seen some terrible reviews. One likened this to looking deeply inside of one's asshole, perhaps it has Moshveg's herself. And another one described how, apparently Moshveg has described her writing style as if you were watching Kate Moss take a shit, and the reviewer then said, well, this is nothing like that. This is as if you were watching 20 strangers take a shit and none of them are Kate Moss. So with that glowing praise, I'm not exactly excited to get into this, but I will persevere. Apparently it's like super dark, lots of bodily functions as per usual in the medieval period. So well, I'm reluctantly excited, but we shall see how I feel about it when I get to it. And then the next question is anticipated releases for the second half of the year. I figured I would just go through what I flagged on Storygraph. For my job, I do have to buy new book releases, but I'm typically not looking more than a couple months down the line. I'm just gonna go to Storygraph and do pub date latest first. Oh, I do really wanna read briefly A Delicious Life by Nell Stevens. That sounds fascinating. It is about a lesbian ghost pining after a woman who's visiting the house that she haunts. Uh, Mercury Pictures Presents, I'm hoping, is gonna be stunning because Anthony Mara's previous two works were wonderful. I liked his novel more than his short story collection, so I also think that that bodes well for me, and he's been working on this book for like a decade, so hopefully it's fabulous. All I know is I think it is about, obviously, movies. That's not super helpful. Um, I'm very excited about it though and will likely pre-order it if I can't get an ARC, but it comes out in August, I think. Um, I am intrigued by, ooh, Diary of a Void, which is a translated novel from Japanese about a woman who pretends to be pregnant to be treated better at her job, which I find fascinating. Um, although, you know, unwise because you can't be pregnant forever but I also love the cover of this book. That definitely swayed me a bit. I have an arc of Babel, an arcane history by R.F. Kuang. I did not really like the Poppy War. I begrudgingly skimmed to the end, but I remember almost nothing about the end. I just remember not liking the first half very much and did not continue on in that series. But Babel sounds fascinating. Historical fiction about translation and appropriation of cultures, I think, in, in Oxford University in the 1800s. Um, don't remember exactly, but I'm really excited about that. I'm also excited about The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell, which I also have a digital arc of and should get to soon. All I know is it's a uh, Renaissance historical fiction. Nona the Ninth I'm intrigued to read because I didn't really like Harrow the Ninth Month much. I found it very confusing and perplexing, so I'm interested to see where Tamsin Weir is going to go next, but I do think I need to give Harrow a reread. And someone suggested to me, I think it was Kate, uh, suggested to me that I should listen to this on audio. So I'm probably going to revisit the series on audio because I loved Gideon, but Harrow lost me. So hopefully Nona redeems it all. List montage by Bling Ma I'm very excited about. Also sorry to future me for having to insert all of these covers, but um, I just recently reread Severance and loved it just as much as before. And so I'm excited to see what her short stories are like. And uh, Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ng. I know nothing about it. I have an arc of it, a uh, digital arc, and it's a new Celeste Ng, so I know it's gonna be really big and I want to get in on that. Um, and then Silverborn, A Mystery of Morgan Crow, which is the fourth book in the Nevermore series. I'm looking forward to that as well. Will I ever get to all those books? Probably not, but it's fun to try. Question number five is biggest disappointment of the year. I have two for this because they were both from authors that I previously had loved and hadn't come out with a novel in a long time, so I was so eager to see what they'd come out with next and I didn't like either of these books that much. First is The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ezeki. I love A Tale for the Time Being so much and I liked her previous works as well, like I really liked My Year of Meats also, but I feel like she was trying something really new with The Book of Form and Emptiness, but it was too much. Like it had a kooky narrator, it had, it was dealing with mental health in multiple different venues, including mental health treatment, hoarding, hearing voices. It had, you know, the book narrating the book. It had the book within the book that was like the Buddhist Marie Kondo situation. It was just too much. It ended up being messy and I didn't connect to any of the characters or anything that was going on. I was very removed from it and it was far too long. So I ultimately like thought it was okay, but definitely let down. And To Paradise by Hanina Yanagihara. 
I don't think there's anything redeeming about it. Like there may be were some interesting turns of phrase, but I couldn't recall anything, any images, no, nothing comes to mind. Um, and the more that I think about just how stupid it was that like the names repeated, even that there was nothing really holding everything together narratively or symbolically. And I hated the way that every section ended with the words to paradise. I don't know if that's a, a, a spoiler or not, but I think it was a very poor, weak attempt to tie everything together and also kind of leave you on a cliffhanger, but it just left me so cold. I feel like I actually rolled my eyes when I saw that happening multiple times in the book. It's just bad and I didn't like it, so. Next question is the biggest surprise, and for me, that is Stranger in the, Sh in the Shogun City by Amy Stanley. This book totally just passed me by when it first came around. I never felt that intrigued to read it because I just don't think I understood what it was. But it's a look at what life was like during the Tokugawa period in Edo, which is now known as Tokyo, um, which <laughs> if you don't know much about me, um, or you know, if you haven't been around the channel for a long time, I was a Japanese major in undergrad, and I love the Edo slash Tokugawa period. It's a fascinating period in history in which Japan's borders were lar largely closed off to the rest of the world between 1600 and the 1860s. And so the way that culture evolved and things changed and the way that the government and society worked is just deeply fascinating. It's about that, but also focusing on a woman's experience living in that time period at the end of the Edo period, and just what life would have been like because her family obsessively kept all of their diaries and correspondence. So we have this huge archival record of this family and the exchanges that they, they wrote back and forth to each other throughout this time so we can learn about this woman and her life. Moving from a rural town in Japan to bustling Tokyo and what that would have been like. Um, I just, I loved it so much. I loved Tokyo. I loved learning about Japan and Japanese stuff back when I was in university. I would love to take up the language again because I felt so much of, I felt so much of a passion for it. Like it, it's just one of the most fun things that I've, I've ever gotten to experience is going to Japan and studying the Japanese language and history. I love it very much. So this was totally up my alley. Um, and I, d I don't think I understood how like deeply rooted in archives it was and how well researched it was and, and what it really was. So I've kind of written it off before, but I'm so glad that I gave it a try. And that is thanks to Jill from The Book Bully. She bought this book for me and thank you. It was, it was a very delightful surprise. Question number seven is favorite new author. And I don't know if I have one yet. I feel like the closest answer I have to this is Maggie Shipstead because I really do want to read more of her stuff but I read so many debut authors or just new to me authors in general that I don't often find favorites. I have very few like actual favorites where I dive deeply back into their, their back catalog and, and read their older works. It's something that I've strived to fix basically since I started this channel and it's something that just doesn't come naturally to me. I love trying new things. So um, I don't know if I can call her a new favorite author yet, but I'm very excited to read more of her stuff. Question number eight is newest fictional crush. And my, my answer for this is not fictional, but uh, just Stanley Tucci. He's a gem of a human. He's made wonderful films. He discusses those films in his book, Taste, but he also talks a lot about food. And I really need to get around to watching his show about Italy because then it's just more Stanley Tucci, but like, what's not to love? He's not fictional, but he's definitely crush worthy, I'd say. Question number eight is your newest favorite character. I loved Agnes from Hamnet. She's just a brilliant character. She is Shakespeare's wife who we really know almost nothing about her so it was all fictionalized and normally that kind of thing really takes me out of a story or bothers me but we know so little about Shakespeare and his family and his children that it is just you know all made up and so that didn't bother me in the same way where it's like obviously based in research, but we're not basing it off of really well-known entities. I think that that is where maybe I struggle. Um, so yeah, we know nothing about Agnes slash Anne Hathaway. Uh, we don't even know what her actual name was apparently because she was called different things. And, um, so, and we know almost nothing about Shakespeare. So it did just feel very immersive and, and completely like transportive and almost whimsical and fantastical because I know that this is obviously not rooted entirely in fact. So I really enjoyed Agnes. 
but also just one of the greatest characters of all time is the fool he is a brilliant character i obviously can't talk much about like how he has grown and changed since the original series but i think that the work that robin hop has done to him and his relationship with fitz over the books is truly masterful. Last certain character I want to briefly mention is Ivy from White Ivy. Not that she's a good person or a person that I'd want to hang around or be friends with, but just a brilliantly written character. This is an astounding debut that I want more people to read and talk about because it is just really fascinating. Interesting character study with hints of like talented Mr. Ripley, the great Gatsby. It just was really really good. I loved this book. And question number 10 is a book that made you cry. I have nothing else to say. Uh, question number 11 is a book that made you happy. I have two nonfiction books for this answer. Uh, first is A Swim in a Pond in the Rain, which is essentially an English class in a book. So of course I was gonna love it. it this is just a master class, almost literally like of reading short stories and thinking about short stories um, and looking at things through George Saunders lens and how he looks at things and how he teaches things um, and is a very renowned professor of Syracuse University's MFA program getting a little taste of that felt like a special treat and I wish that there were a million more books like this where I could just relive my life as being an English major because I was a double major English Japanese apparently I'm feeling very nostalgic for college which is weird I think I just really like learning and I have subjects that I like learning because I didn't particularly enjoy my university experience. The other book I want to say for a book that made me happy is Taste by Stanley Tucci. As I mentioned before, um, it just is a really delightful celebrity memoir that has some good stories about being on sets but is mostly about his life through food as the subtitle would suggest and you learn a lot about like his, his grandparents and his parents and what they cook and what he cooks for people and um, you know food is kind of a, a way of understanding people and getting more connected to his culture and it's just a delightful time especially if you listen to the audio because then you just get to hang out with Stanley Tucci in your ears for a few hours and it was really wonderful. Question 12 is the most beautiful book you've bought this year so far. I haven't bought that many books and honestly I don't find many of them to be that beautiful. Like no offense to the books I bought but the covers are just mostly fine. But I do love the cover of this paperback edition of Burnt Sugar mostly just because I love the colors. I love the green and I love the way that the pink and the oranges pop on the cover. It just I think it's pretty striking and beautiful so that's what I'm going to say for that. And then Number 13 is what do you need to read before the end of the year and you know that book tower the other books I have in the other room would be nice. Realistically I would just love to do some more rereads I'm not gonna put a number on it and read some more of my five star predictions again I'm not gonna put a number on it because I'm technically behind if I'm supposed to be reading one per month for the calendar year of 2022 but nobody cares about that except for me so I just want to keep decreasing my physical TBR. Um, which I've been doing on Pango Books, by the way. I have a Pango Books storefront, which is this marketplace for selling books, used books online. It's US only, unfortunately, but I will pop my link down in the description in case you want to see what I'm selling. Most of my books have sold, but, um, you know, if you have an account over there and you want to give me a follow, that'd be cool. Because I, that's how I am getting rid of books that I no longer want to have on my shelves that are in relatively good condition. So if you live in the US, it can be an interesting place to browse around for used books. Um, but yeah, I just I want to read more. I just want to keep reading. I want to read my arcs that I've requested since I have a few piled up now. And I want to enjoy what I read. So I'm not going to set any like strict numbers or goals on it. I just want to have keep having a good time because life is stressful enough. So that's my take on this tag. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for more bookish stuff and I'll see you in the next one.